All right, so I've been doing all of these different bread videos, sourdough videos, how to make bread without yeast, etc., and I'll link to them above. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to show you was a way to cheat to make sourdough. Um, it requires a bread maker, and a friend of mine brought it up. So let me give you a little bit of a background that um, if you're going to make sourdough in a bread maker, it has you use a sourdough starter and it also has you use a quick rise yeast like bread maker yeast and the reason why it does that is is because if you're doing an automated bread in a bread maker it doesn't have that five or six hours to rise like a true sourdough will but if you use the starter and you boost that with some active dry yeast you still get the taste of a sourdough bread in about two or three hours <laughs> instead of waiting you know a whole day or two to make a sourdough bread from scratch and going through all the rise and everything that you have to do so my bread maker came with a recipe book it's an oster and one of the things in here it has European settings menu 8 and then it says sourdough bread and the ingredients are one and a quarter cups of sourdough starter and one cup of sourdough starter is 200 grams so you can take 1.25 times 200 and give you how many grams of sourdough starter you need three quarter cup of warm water one and three quarter teaspoons of salt four cups of bread flour three tablespoons of sugar and one and three quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast so you're actually using less yeast in the sourdough bread than what you would normally use in the regular bread because you're using the sourdough starter you're still going to get that same taste you're just using the yeast to help it rise so that's a quick way of doing it and as soon as i back the camera up and reset everything up i'm going to go ahead and add everything to make the sourdough bread in this we're going to put it in the bread maker and I'll all show you what right, it looks so like. Pretty much all my recipes, you notice I always start with the measuring cup on the scale. That is because when I turn this on, my scale will center to zero with the weight of the measuring cup. And that makes it very easy for me to measure out weights. Um, I'm measuring in grams. Uh, I need one and a quarter cups of my starter. One cup of starter weighs 200 grams. And a quarter of 200 is 50, so that means I need 250 grams of starter. Now, when you're, when you're making your starter, um, when your jar starts to get too full, a lot of people will throw that starter out. And I never do that. What I do is I make one of these bread maker breads. Or another thing you can do with this, instead of throwing it out, is you can put a skillet on your stove and fry just the starter by itself like if you're going to reduce this by half you would you know put put half of that into your skillet and fry it up and it actually tastes pretty good as long as you have two tablespoons of starter left over You can always take and build it back up very quickly. I'm going to give out a minute. 250 grams. So that goes as a liquid into our bread maker pan. And actually kind of hard for me to do this the way I've got this set up let me grab a spatula so I can clean that out and I'll be right back I just got a spatula so I can get this out and you're gonna to have to excuse if my arms in there blocking the camera I would seriously be embarrassed if you guys saw the shape of my kitchen right now it's a mess 
you know, between the homestead and all my chores I do around here and all the cooking, it does not take very long for things to get out of control around here. All right, so there's my 250 grams of starter, give or take. You can tell I left some in there. Um, you can't actually taste this right off the spatula. Mmm. Good, good. Make sure we're still at zero before I do the next one. We're still at zero. Perfect. So the next thing that I need is three quarter cup of warm water. Warm water generally means at about 85 degrees. Yeah, so 150 grams would be three quarters of a cup. I'm at 158. I'm going to call it good. Then I need one and three quarter teaspoons of salt. I believe that one teaspoon of salt is seven grams. So that means I need around uh, 12 to 13 grams of salt. I may be wrong on that measurement. Let me cheat and look at my cheat sheet. One teaspoon of salt weighs six grams. So one and three quarter teaspoons of salt would be somewhere between 10 and 11 grams. So there's seven, eight. There's 10 grams of salt. So the salt goes in. Next I need four cups of bread flour. Bread flour weighs 127 grams per cup. So I need 127 times four. Now you might wonder why I actually do this by weight. And it's because I don't want the bread to be too dense, which happens a lot of times. If I were to just use a measuring cup and I'm going to pack the flour in there and it would weigh way more than 127 grams. And a common problem you will hear people talk about that use bread makers is how dense their bread is. And a lot of times that's the reason why. They're going by volume instead of weight. And this will be the fourth one. One twenty seven. So there's four cups of flour. Now it says we need three tablespoons of sugar. I look at my handy chart back here, tablespoons, a tablespoon of sugar weighs 12 grams and I need three so that would be 36, 36 grams of sugar. Thirty-six grams of sugar. Next, I'm going to need one and three quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast. And I'm going to use my little handy chart. Dry yeast is three grams for one teaspoon. I need one and three quarter teaspoons. So I'm going to take uh, three times 1.75 actually gives me five and a quarter grams this is the yeast that i'm using it's a fleshman's bread machine yeast i keep it in the refrigerator what i say it was five and a quarter can't really do five and a quarter but i can do slightly more than five There's slightly more than five. Okay, so every video that you make bread in a bread machine, 
always has you make a well to keep the yeast out of the water and that's exactly what I'm going to do here so I made kind of like a little dimple in the center that's where my yeast is going to go just like that so I plug the bread maker in I put the pan in it's actually kind of hard to do from over on the side I put the pan in made sure it's seated all the way I closed the lid now the bread machine says so we do menu select to select European which is eight menu item eight once I've got my menu settings set up you just hit start So basically the bread machine does everything for me. So when this is done baking, I'll bring you back and I'll show you what the quick sourdough bread looks like made in a the bread machine. The timer just went off on this. And sadly, before we can cut into it, we need to put it on a cooling rack. I've got the cooling rack here. Trying to do this without getting burned. Trying to do this while standing way farther to the side than what I normally would. Nice thing about a bread machine, the bread normally just falls right out. So this is our quick and easy sourdough bread. I'm going to let this cool. Basically the bread slicer has a slot where you put the knife. You put the loaf in until you hit your thickness plate. And then you just slice. You want to cut at a slow rate, don't push too hard, let the knife actually cut the bread. So here's what the first slice looks like. It's still warm. It's not like hot, but it's still warm. It smells so good. There we go. I am actually going to make me a sandwich with this and I am going to chow down. By the way, you will learn making bread the heel is always the best part.